this video, we'll look at the use of the graph view on Obsidian Mobile for iPhone or iPad. And it builds on earlier videos that I've made aiming to help beginners become familiar with Obsidian as a notes taking and knowledge management tool. So first of all, what do we mean by the graph view? So the graph view is a way of seeing how all of our notes link together and it shows them in a graphical way. So let's open up my graph view. I have made a simple vault with all of my different notes being shown in the graph view and how they link together, how the tags work. So let's go back to our simple vault just to get a little bit of context. So I've made uh, some notes about uh, cities and countries in Europe and I've tagged them as geography. And I've also made some notes about a couple of musicians who did who uh, were in Europe at various times. So there's one about David Bowie, who made a couple of al albums in Europe, and one about uh, Jim Morrison of The Doors, who happened to die in Paris. So let's go back to our graph view again. So if we go to our menu and we click on the open graph view, you can see all of your different notes and how they link together. Now, if I go into the settings, we can start to control how we can use and view the graph view. So I'll open that up now. So by default, the tag view is turned off. If we turn it off, we will not see our tags. And if we turn it on, we can see our tags and they are, there's a different color for our tags there. And it also shows how our different um, tags are linked uh, with, the, with the notes that they've been tagged with. If I turn on existing files only, it will only show notes that have actually been created as files rather than linked to content that has not yet been created. So when you create a link, it will create a placeholder, but it will not create an actual file until you've actually clicked on that note. If you want more detail on that, I suggest you look at my earlier video about using links. And I'll put that in the show notes. So I'm going to turn on the toggle for existing files only, and it's only showing notes that have actually been created. So we can see our simple vaults here. Um, I like to turn on the arrows view so I can see the direction of the links. So it's showing which link is linking out to which, sorry, which note is linking out to another note. So, for example, the Jim Morrison page is linking out to the Paris page and there's a two directional link between Paris and France because they are both linking to each other. The orphans that being turned on, we can see notes that do not have any links at all. So I made a note about Girl with All the Gifts, which is a book I read recently in this vault, and that's not linking to anything and it's not even tagged with anything. So that is an orphan. Under displays, we can turn arrows on and off. We can make our nodes. So the nodes are the actual balls and the writing there. So we can see the points on our graph view where the notes are. We can make those bigger or smaller. If you've got a big graph with lots and lots of notes, if you do that, they'll start colliding with each other and the whole thing will look rather cluttered. I like to increase the thickness because they're very thin and not that easy to see. So I tend to turn that right up. And that doesn't, that only has a subtle effect as I increase the link thickness. And you can also change the forces about how the different notes kind of get closer or further away from each other. I don't tend to change that very much, but you might want to change the link distance. So you bring your links closer or further away from each other. And you can see how we do that as we adjust that particular setting. So this is all about how we can see our graph view. The next part of it is actually starting to create filtered views. So we can actually go and see particular content. So the first thing we could do is actually we can look at a note and we can tap with our finger on Rome, for example, and it will jump to the Rome note. If we go back, if I tap on David Bowie, it will jump to the David Bowie note. Now, I thought 
it seems logical if you are using a on the iPad version, you are using a mouse. It makes sense that you should be able to tap on the writing or on the node. It will take you there, but you actually have to physically tap it with your finger and it will take you there, but not with the mouse. So I would like to know if that is possible or if that is a bug or it will be possible at some time to be able to use the mouse for that to work or if that is a problem with a particular theme. The other thing that is useful when we are using this on, on a touch-based device is we can pinch or zoom so we can go closer or further away. And if we make it too small by zooming out, then eventually you will stop seeing the names of your notes. So I'm gonna zoom in enough so we can see everything and get a fairly good view. Right, let's start creating a filter. So if I want to see all of notes about Europe, uh, we've got that will display Europe and the note that's linking to it. If I did a filter about cities, we've got a capital cities note. Uh, if I wanted to do a search about France, we can see we've got the Europe page is linking to France and the Paris page is linking to France. So that is a filter view so we can see those particular notes that are, have got France within them or are linking to France. We can also do a search for a particular tag. So if I type in under my filter tag colon and then if I do a search for music it will only show my notes that have been tagged with music. And the only other tag that I've used in this particular graph is geography. And it shows all of my uh, notes that have been created that have been tagged with geography. So that's how we can use our filters to get a better view of what is going on within our graph view and to get a sense about how our knowledge is connected together. That's it really. So in this video, what I've covered is uh, what is the graph view, how we can see the graph view, how we can change the appearance of the graph view and how we can use simple filters to narrow down what we see within the graph view. And I, I spoke a little bit incidentally about how the touch interface can be useful when we're using the graph view, such as pinch and zoom or tapping on the notes to be able to jump straight to particular content when we are using the graph view. Now, I'm really happy that I've covered the basics so you can actually go through all of my different videos on this and treat it like a mini course to get the hang of using Obsidian in general and particularly for the iPhone or iPad. And future videos I'm gonna make on this topic will be a little bit more, um, looking at particular workflows or areas of interest, so such as more on handwriting. So uh, people with an interest in using Obsidian for mobile can explore uh, particular ways of doing things. That's it. If you like what you've seen, uh, please comment, please like, please subscribe, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye for now.